So the big questions are like, what is clinical? What is hermeneutics? What is rigor? Do I have to submit? Um, we'll get to all of that in turn. So we'll start with the logical song by Supertramp. I welcome you to sing along with me. When I was young, it seemed that life was so wonderful, right? And it goes on. Joyful, playful, beautiful, magical, miracle, happily, right? And then we get this turn into the second half of the first verse, right? But then they send me away to teach me how to be sensible, right? Logical, responsible, practical, dependable, and critical to my point, clinical, right? So what we can infer from this, first we take a step back, right? We say like, well, there's this very clear kind of poetic structure. There's this setup of this extremely positive, then we start at the second half with but, right? We're negating what came before and we're getting into the negative, right? And the words here are not extremely negative, right? They're like kind of adult. Right? And one of the negative terms that's thrown in there is clinical. So we can take from this right, that in 1979, when the band decided to record this song, right, that clinical was something that was being thrown in with something that is negative. It's like this kind of icky adult stuff that you just probably don't really want, but you have to do it anyway. Right, so what is hermeneutics? The reason I started that way was to hopefully keep people from feeling uh, intimidated by these big words, but also it's, it's, it's actually an example of what hermeneutics is about. Right? So it's the analysis of text. Um, and there we were looking at right, using that text to help really understand the feelings about clinical in 1979 at least for some group of people. Um, right, text has come to be pretty general. It could be movement of the body. It could be street signs. Um, originally, the, the term came from biblical scholars, but right, they were kind of doing stuff that Talmudic scholars were already doing. Um, and this carries through to contemporary scholarship that's not terribly Christian at all, um, particularly in the humanistic and social sciences. And um, I love this statement. It's like so much text, we're not going to get into it. But I just want <laughs> to put it here. It's on Wikipedia as a call out quote. Uh, and it's really good. I'm going to give you like a synopsis extract on the, um, on the next page. So the, um, in practice, hermeneutics, people just write an inordinate amount of stuff using big words in technical ways that are very intimidating. It doesn't mean you can't do it, right? I mean, maybe you can't, um, it's, it's like technique, right? Like painting, you know, if you really put in the time and you fuss, you can like get the perspective just right and you can convey things in this like really fussy way, right? But do you really need to? Probably not, right? Um, the picture over there is Heidegger. He's a big deal. Um, he sort of, uh, in many ways laid the groundwork for phenomenology, which is where we started including our own personal experience as part of the text, right? That can be included into our analysis of a particular object. Um, they don't talk about them too much in the book, uh, The Embodied Mind, which I highly recommend. Um, it's even more rangy and synthetic than what I'm talking about. But um, he certainly was like the big precursor to, to a lot of the ideas in, in the embodied mind. All right, so back to that big, big long quote, right? These German objective hermeneutics people. Um, one of the, I think, most critical pieces that they're claiming there is that from their perspective, the standard non-hermeneutic methods of quantitative social research can only be justified because they permit a shortcut in generating data, right? So they're like, in other words, saying that quantitative social research is not very good, right? Because it's kind of ignoring um, a great deal of sensitivity and sort of theory construction and refinement and the gathering of a much richer form of evidence 
versus right a quantitative approach generally you're refining things down to a very limited um couple of measures like a couple of numbers right and so i encourage you to go read up on this on your own but uh, i'll briefly define objective hermeneutics more or less incorrectly as paying attention to the individuals including the bodies um, the social context histories etc right, so we're going to transition now to apply that to clinical stuff right so can we apply that same critical filter um, suggested by the hermeneutics the objective hermeneutics school i say yes um, i claim that clinical trials do not generally consider differences in individual experience too much they don't really take social context into account they don't take too much history into account right it's a very it's it's currently still very much in a mass production kind of uniform you know this pill works for everybody kind of mindset um and the question is can we maybe get some progress out of bringing these ways of looking that come from like hermeneutics and critical theory to looking at cl clinical trials themselves <laughs> 